Hi, I'm Kelly Barham, and welcome to the December edition of Life Path. December, it's a joyous time of the year with all the shopping, gifts, gatherings with your family and friends, not to mention all those wonderful holiday meals and sugary temptations. Doesn't your heart just sing thinking about it? <laughs> it truly is a special time of the year. Sadly, however, holidays can also be a time of high stress, both mentally and physically, contributing to adverse health not only now, but also in the future. That is why we are reminding you of a few steps that you can take so you don't run yourself down during this time of year. First, keep your regular visits with your chiropractor. It's easy to miss those appointments when you have so much on your endless to-do list. But your health should always be your first concern. And when it comes to those parties, holiday dinners, and those scrumptious desserts, remember, moderation is the key. So don't overdo it. Instead, enjoy the holidays and savor every part. This goes for drinking too not too much. I, along with your chiropractor, want you to have a safe and healthy holiday season, so don't forget the people around you. This message isn't just for you. Your friends, your neighbors, your relatives all deserve good health, so share the gift of chiropractic with them. There is no greater gift you can give than the gift of health. That is why we always encourage you to share the information that you learn on our show. And when you see something, don't be afraid to say something. It can change that person's life forever. Meanwhile, as you're watching our show, should any questions arise, don't be afraid to turn to your chiropractor. He or she can be a great source of additional information that can help you in making right decisions when it comes to your health. That being said, let's get on with the show. Did you ever really think about what the standard American diet is? Let me tell you, it's sad. Look at your own family, then look at what you see others eating around you. Is your family eating a diet that you should call healthy? Or is it full of fast food and store-bought processed foods with ingredients you can't even pronounce? Well, maybe you've thought about making a change, but don't know where to start. So let me tell you, there's no better time to start than right now. You definitely won't have to wait till New Year's because your health coach, Claire Symes, is here today. She'll show you step-by-step step how to transition your current sad diet to one supportive of your health. And trust me, anyone can do it. So I hope you will too. Now, moving on, I'm glad we have more healthy tips in store. You see, last December, Dr. Jennifer Bonanno of Healthy Chiropractic filmed an episode for us called Don't Shop Till You Drop. <laughs> this information is so pertinent to this crazy holiday shopping season that we're airing the story again. Holiday shopping can be a wonderful part of the season, but for many, it also leads to mental and physical stress. And that backache, those sore feet, aches and pains, if you don't watch it, can lead to other health problems down the line. So pay attention to Dr. Jennifer's simple advice on staying healthy during your outings to the mall. These tips will not only help keep you healthy now as you're dashing about with shopping bags in your hands, but also, if you remember, will have a lasting effect on your health later on. So take care of yourself because this time of the year can get busy and stressful for us all. For example, you ever feel like there isn't enough time in the day to get everything done? So what do we do? What do we scratch off of our list first? Exercise. Exercise, however, is one of the most important things you can do. There are so many health benefits associated with moving your body, including curbing stress. Think of it as a gift to yourself. So whether you're running, biking, or lifting weights, now is not the time to cut down. In fact, I hope you're giving your exercise routine all the time it deserves and not skimping on stretching and warming up before you work out. What? You were never shown how to properly stretch? Well, you're in luck. Today on our show, fitness coach Gloria Golding will do just that. She's going to show some basic stretches anyone can do before their daily workout and remind you why it is so important to stretch. And the thing is, it's so simple. Then you often hear me telling you to spread the word about what you learn on our show, to tell your family, your friends about chiropractic, to share your chiropractor's cards with people you meet. The knowledge you gain and your insider's view of living a chiropractic lifestyle are so special something that many will never see unless people like you spread the word. And that is exactly what our next story is all about. Dr. Steve Tullius of Tullius Chiropractics explains what it means to be a chiropractic lifesaver. Are you one already? It's an important reminder of how simple it is to change someone's life. All you have to do is speak up. So sit up, straighten up, and pay close attention. Hmm. Speaking of sitting up straight, did you know your posture plays an important role in your health? Seems too simple. Well, it's not. And paying attention to your posture is more important in today's world than ever. 
Think of the way we use our cell phones, our laptops. We are all guilty of bad posture. And look at your kids. Between the hours spent playing video games and the unendless texting, have you ever noticed their posture? The reality is, it is not if bad posture will affect your health, it is when, because eventually it will. And your posture can influence your health in ways you never thought of. So while you're thinking of yourself and your kids, let's join Dr. Dean DePice of TLC. You'll have a great reason to straighten up. Dr. Dean. Something I know needs to be shared with you today is this statement. Sick posture equals a sick life. There's no way to separate the two. We know that posture defines so much about our body. And I've been in practice since 1987. My wife is in practice with me. And in these two plus decades of work, one thing that's become profoundly clear to me is more important than adjusting someone's body, which certainly you're getting that right now, is adjusting their intelligence. A more informed and intelligent person has the chance to choose to behave more healthy. So we want to make sure that you get truth. I want to make sure you, you get truth given to you so that then you can process it, own it for yourself, and then do something about it, right? If we have information and we don't take it to the point of implementation, it can just lead to frustration or, or depression, right? It's almost like you'd be better off not knowing. Well, you now know that sick posture equals what? A sick life, even if you feel fine. Sick posture is much like most diseases, heart disease, cancer. While this stuff is growing and eating away at your existence, you tend to feel fine. And then after decades of erosive and, and rotting conduct internally, then we start to manifest systems, uh, symptoms. You know, it's well understood the last effects of an illness to present themselves are the symptoms, and the first effects of an illness to go away are the symptoms. So symptoms are the most feeble and useless component of truly pursuing health that are out there. We want to take care of ourselves regardless of that. So what do you do about posture? What's the significance of posture? Well, there's a medical study published recently outside of chiropractic that proved that someone with sick posture, meaning particularly a kyphosis, a hyperkyphosis, a, a humping of the mid-back, someone who has kyphosis, a hyperkyphosis, is 144% more likely to die from any respiratory problems they have, like emphysema or respiratory distress syndromes and so on. So understand, there is no question, sick posture equals a more sickened life. And that's the quote I guess I want to, to leave with you. If it sounds like I'm putting an emphasis on it and maybe it's even a disturbing statement to you, good. You know, I'm not here to become your friend. I'm here to become someone who's useful to you and builds you up in the process. You know, there was other research published that had to do with sagittal plane lines. That's fancy medical talk for a plumb line from the center of a certain point in the neck. And they discovered when the plumb line falls further and further in front of the sacrum or the base of your back, you were more likely to be sick. I believe it was a panel of seven or eight medical doctors had nothing to do with anything privy to chiropractic. They were studying this and they discovered without question, the further the plumb line went and the more number of days, weeks, months, or years that we carried that position, the more we deteriorated our abilities to be healthy people. So what's the bottom line? You need to be cognizant of this. You know, an informed society is a more safe society. Intelligent people are more likely to stand up and revolt against wrong and do and choose what is right. And that's really the purpose of this training right now. This doctor has been wise enough to not only pursue how to adjust your body, that's simple. Right? The real virtue for a doctor is are they adjusting your thinking and therefore your behavior when no one's watching? What do you have to watch out for? Guys, just driving. You know, have you ever seen people at traffic lights hunched forward, sitting at computer screens and writing all day? You know, I live for this stuff and I lecture all over the world and I find that when I lecture and I get intense, I go forward and I have to constantly catch myself. So you right now, if, in fact, let's do this, sit up straight. If you had a move just now, you're a carrier of sick posture. How's that for a simple way to look at it? If to say the term sit up straight and to respond to it means you actually have to change position, well then you were already in a sick posture. 
So we have to continually catch ourselves to bring our center of gravity over our spine. For when our shoulders are back, our chest is open, our respiratory system is strong. When our head is not tilted back, but drawn and retracted back, this bowling ball, this 10, 15 pound object that just moving in an inch or two forward can put hundreds of pounds of stress into your mid and lower back. As we retract this back, bring the shoulders back at the plane line, this sagittal plane line in place, we're in an amazingly strong place. So, I welcome you to look at yourself. And a simple exercise is just to continually work on reverse shoulder rolls, but to do them not only focusing on the shoulder like a pigeon who juts its head forward, but to do the shoulder roll and bring the head back. So do the shoulder roll and focus on retraction, not just extension, retraction of the neck. So, first thing we have to get is awareness. You have to be aware that sick posture equals what? A sick life regardless of the presence or absence of symptoms. And understand that there's research in and outside of chiropractic that confirms this is a fact, not a conversation. All right? You can converse about it intelligently if you understand these facts. You can live more healthy within it if you do something with these facts. And what I urge you to do is thank your doctor of chiropractic for educating you, but don't just make this about you. Your life isn't supposed to be about you. Stop it. You take facts, you take truth that make life safe and you bring it to others. So, think about it. Who do you know needs to think about this, hear this that hasn't? Who in your coworkers? Who at your places of worship, your uh, places of recreational activity? We all have our families. We all have people left and right of us that fight truth or information because sometimes people just don't want to have to know the stuff because then they don't want to have to do anything about it. Whatever, you know something now. Do something with it in your life and bring it home to your life so others can do something with it as well. The point is, the healthier this world is and the less medicated everyone is and the more vibrant they are, the safer our roadways are, the more intelligent voting becomes, the more willing people are to stand up for what's right. Do what's right. Take care of the one in the mirror, you. And use chiropractic not just to treat your symptoms, but to raise up your vitality. No more sick posture for you. You want a vibrant posture and a better life. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dean. So when Dr. Dean asked you to sit up in your seat, were you the one who had to straighten up? <laughs> After that story, I hope you now see why your posture is so important to your health. It can actually affect every part of your body's living function. And same goes for your kids. Well, actually it affects them even more because bad posture over a greater length of time has greater effect. And we are starting them off earlier than before. Are they slumped over the game controller? Neck bent down? Texting away on their phones? How are they sitting at their computers? In this electronic age, things are very different for our kids than it was for us. Unfortunately, all those wonderful electronic gadgets contribute to bad posture and to an earlier sick life. That's the sad reality. So it's up to you. Talk to your children about posture, get them checked by your chiropractor, and in that way, set them up for a healthier future. Now, speaking of a healthier future, if you're not eating well, you're doing yourself a disservice. Your body relies on the nutrition it gets from food. So if your food isn't very nutritious, it's time to make a change. And we have just the right person to help you do just that. Our health coach, Claire Simon, is here to show you how to transition from a poor diet to a healthier one, and in a way that your whole family can come on board. So let's not delay and join Claire now. Can't wait to see the plan she has in store for us. Well, I'm glad to be here today. We're going to be talking about the standard American diet. And what we call the standard American diet, SAD is sad, and believe me, it's a sad situation. And with me again is Claire Sign. Hi, Kelly. Our health coach. And she's going to teach nice us some great to stuff today. Well, I'm going to try. I'm glad okay. you're here. Good I'm to see you again. Good to see you as well. So, Thank you. Glad to where be back. do we go? Well, let's head down this way. Okay. This is uh, an example of how people can transition from what the typical American diet is, what many people eat. Um, this is an example of a fast food meal, mm -hmm. french fries, hamburger. We've got some snack foods. Okay. Um, we've got some desserts pudding, pizza, things, soda, soda, that's a big oh, yeah. thing right now. Um, so this is what most people eat, whether it's convenience, 
um, or maybe they just, it tastes good, you know, they don't know any different, um, but this is what gets people into trouble. This is, yeah. um, not that it's all bad, it's all about balance. Yes, it is. You once in a while, yeah, but you've got to know what's in your food. Yes. It's and I'd say years ago, they probably made fast food a little bit better, and over the years, they've made it cheaper <laughs> to get it to you faster, right? and added a lot of stuff to it. So it's good to be informed. Always read labels if you yeah. can. I know sometimes you can get online and look at the nutrition information. Right. So because there can are do some that. fast food places that have 100% beef they do. and whole grain breads and things like that, and they make their fries there, all natural. There is so healthy. So there are some, but again, yeah. moderation. There is healthy options. Right. So if you have no other choice, go for the healthy options. But if you're wanting to make a change and you can make a change, um, if you go over mm -hmm. to our next group here. This is going to show you um, some options that will taste similar okay. to what you're used to. Instead of maybe the fast food burger, you can have um, a vegetarian burger. There's okay. lots of really great tasting vegetarian burgers. You can have a turkey burger. Um, especially for children, trying to incorporate changes that are still similar to what they're mm -hmm. used to. Even some grown-ups I know, you know, <laughs> they, they like certain things. Yep. This is a great product. This is a snack food that... Um, if you were going to make it in your own kitchen, it's pretty close. Okay. So if I were going to make cheese puffs, this has actually real cheese, organic cornmeal, buttermilk, okay. paprika and turmeric as, as coloring instead of artificial colors, nice. which are actually good for us, turmeric is... It's got a chemical, well, it's chemical sounding in there, but you, sometimes you can't get rid of everything. You, you don't, yeah, you don't always know. <laughs> it's, it's best to, okay. like I say, be informed, and this sure. is definitely a step up. So we're showing you how to transition in stages. Good. Go for the whole grain cereal. Um, this is a frozen pizza that is organic. Um, nice. And you can also get... Um, different crust options if you want to do gluten-free mm -hmm. or you want to do a rice crust okay. you can do that maybe instead of the pudding you can have a yogurt um, so a similar texture um, this is a really fun product this is interesting um, this is a natural soda made with stevia called Zevia so instead of the <laughs> sugar laden sodas with the artificial colors you can have the, the naturally sweetened soda you're still Great. getting your kind of fun treat treat time there again and slowly because some people it is harder to to go directly to the healthiest foods it might upset their system too so mm -hmm. just like you're saying transition slowly and here's the first step right like maybe that. just add a few just mm -hmm. incorporate a few of things experiment you might not like something and, and you that's go from a there. really good point to experiment mm -hmm. don't be afraid to go down your natural food aisle um, I know it's like <laughs> what you, what's down that aisle, right? <laughs> and some people think that healthy foods don't taste good, and that's not so true They've come anymore. A long way. They're much more sophisticated mm -hmm. than they used to be. The taste, the textures are very similar good. to good. what our uh, palates are used to. Good so deal. Speak. I okay. like that. Now. All right. So for our middle group, maybe next time instead of popping in a frozen pizza, you can actually make it. Nice. That'd be fun. Yeah. Kids, kids might look, like it. They do. They like to um, make their own food, mm -hmm. be creative. So you can buy a a crust, add a natural pizza sauce, cheese, you can add your own toppings, maybe some fresh tomatoes, maybe basil Ooh, from your garden. Ooh, there you do go. you like I, basil? I have, That's yes, my favorite pizza. It, yes. yes, very easy to grow. Mm -hmm. Grows like a weed. Maybe instead of hamburger, go for um, a sandwich on a whole grain bread, and then you can add some vegetables to it, Good. whatever you like. Um, instead of french fries, maybe um, do a fruit a vegetable tray. This is kind of a nice little option to go easy. This is this is very inexpensive. You're getting your veggies, um, and you know it's to go. Nice color too. Yeah, you want to focus on color. That's one of Good the choice. keys to eating healthy. Focus on color, bright, vibrant colors. Um, I don't know if you noticed that a lot of the packaged foods and things that they have for children are brightly colored. Brightly colored. That's Get actually them pulled into wanting to that's, eat. It. That's right. But that's actually a natural thing for us we naturally go for um, vibrant colors because you know red sports car <laughs> My, exactly. just say it <laughs> exactly <laughs> but instead of having the artificial colors you mm -hmm. want to go for the natural foods these are great little um, options veggie straws they're very similar to french fries and they're um, good yeah they have tomato and spinach powder in there um, so 
they incorporate a little bit of vegetables, you're getting healthier and healthier as you go. Okay. Um, instead of pudding, you can have um, a natural yogurt. This yogurt is actually sweetened with agave nectar, no, which is a, that's good. Yes, it's good stuff, um, which is a natural sweetener. Um, instead of soda, maybe go for juice. Um, I don't know. These are sweet potato chips. I don't know if you've ever tried these. I haven't had these. that brand, but I've had them. And they're they're very good. really good. Yes. No salt added is my favorite. I could eat the whole bag, but I won't. <laughs> so, I like but anyway, <laughs> yeah, maybe I a little this. bit. And then finally, this is our this is our whole foods destination. This is the way we're going. This is our yeah. destination. Right. All the way through here, travel to this. Yes, and you can look what we have. Yeah, <laughs> so you can see the difference. Yeah, you're right. I do. I see a big difference in the color mm -hmm. and the textures of the foods. So visually, it's actually more appealing to eat this way. You can do an oatmeal in the morning. Which oh, is very healthy. Yes. We talk about this all the time. And Your heart, like, heart healthy. It's a whole grain. Good. But some people think, oh, it takes too much time. Microwave, two minutes. Okay. Even if you want, and some people don't like to use microwave, if you want to do it on the stove top, five minutes tops for your breakfast. You can't spare five minutes. Come on. Kids <laughs> love it. And um, then we have this. This is a, um, like a very popular cereal, but this one doesn't have any sweetener on it. You can add fresh fruit. You can add blueberries, mm -hmm. strawberries, but you've got the whole grains. Yes, can use that's good. I should get, I buy this. Whatever. Yeah, it's, it's good It's all stuff. natural. Or salad. Ooh, um, and look at the colors in there. Yeah, a great way to dress your salad is fresh lemon mm. with a little bit of herbs. There's so many herb blends now. Yep. Any grocery store. You don't have to go to a natural food store. And make sure you know what's in there. No salt. There you go. Herbs, lots of herbs. You're going right. to read that for us? No, I don't have my glasses. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, that makes two of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you asked me. Right. Yeah. Um, so for dinner, mm -hmm. instead of the pizza, you can have chicken breast. Okay. Many grocery stores now prepare roasted chicken. Nice. You don't even have to cook the chicken. You can buy the chicken already prepared. Um, brown rice now comes. You can do it in nice. a minute. Carrots. Um, this is one of my favorite um, tricks that I like to do. This is Perrier water okay. with a little bit of a liquid stevia. Stevia, again, that was in the soda, right. but it's a natural herb that is sweet. It's 300 times sweet. It has root beer flavor. Yes. Yeah, so My it's son kind will of, be happy. It's kind of like having a root beer. It <laughs> gives you that little extra Might flavor. Have to try that. that. Yeah, it is. It's good. Or you can use fresh fruit. That would be good. You can hear we have, instead of the pudding again, we can have natural yogurt. Mm -hmm. Add Greek fresh fruit, fat yogurt. and then that my favorite, obviously, stevia again. Wow. Yeah. So that's our pathway. That's it. Here's our plan, our goal. Go all the way to here. This and is lovely. there you go. It's very good. I mean, there's things I brought up with, I was raised with. I, I don't eat them very often anymore. Once in a while, I will eat one or two. It's all moderation. But I've transitioned my family to okay. a lot more of this. It's all about balance. Yes. And they're a lot healthier, too. Thank you again, oh, Claire. Oh, my pleasure. It's great, and I'm okay. sure you'll be back to get us healthier again I'd as love our to. health coach. I can't right. wait. All right, what are we going to start? Well, we're going to start on this end. All right, all right, all right. Here. Come on, let's all go. Right, let's go. You ready to go? I'll take the salad. All right, let's go. Bye. <laughs>
So let me give you some pointers to get through this shopping season in a happy, healthy, and safe way. One of the things we need to do is make sure you leave the house with comfortable layered clothing. You will get warm when you're going into st stores and you will be cold when you're running out to the car to drop off all of those bags. So dress in layers and make sure you have some comfortable athletic shoes. You'll be running back and forth to that car quite a bit. The other thing we need to make sure we have are snacks and lots of water. Some ideas of very good snacks are things that will not spike your sugar, your blood sugar. Things that spike your blood sugar are candy bars, vitamin waters, things that have sugar in them. So a better snack would be a handful of almonds or cashews, a cheese stick, granola bar, or a piece of fruit. And lots and lots of water. And when I say water, I mean water not your big gulp from 7-Eleven, and not a coffee or a tea. Those are diuretics. They will actually leach more water from your body instead of rehydrating you. So lots of water. Now where are you going to carry all of these things? While we're shopping, a purse is not the best choice. A better idea for the holiday shopping marathon is to wear a small backpack or a fanny pack. But let's face it, it's not the 80s and we're not in Europe and fanny packs just aren't in style anymore. So to keep your hands free, your better option is a backpack versus a purse that would make you lean from side to side. That backpack is going to help you balance and stand up straight and cause less stress on your body during this marathon of shopping. Speaking of bags, keep those gift bags alternating from side to side and keep them equally weighted from side to side. Again, so you're not leaning as if you have a purse on your shoulder. And remember to take frequent breaks. When you're taking these frequent breaks, either to have a light snack and to drink lots of water, you also need to go drop these gift bags off at your car. Getting rid of them will help you to not have to worry about leaning from side to side, putting stress on your back, and ending up out of alignment and having to see your chiropractor sooner than later. Make sure that you're taking those frequent breaks with your water and with your snacks. Another subject that we need to touch on is kids. Taking your children shopping during this crazy marathon is just not smart. It will stress you out even more and cause this holiday season to be more stressful than it needs to be. Let's enjoy ourselves. One thing I tell patients to do is to take their children shopping beforehand. Make it a day, just your kids and you, and tell them that you're going shopping for Santa's list. You're going to write down exactly what they want to tell Santa. That way, it'll also cut down on the amount of time that you need to spend in the stores and the number of bags and returns later that you'll have to deal with. You can run into the store, get exactly what you need, and run on out. That will cut down the stressful time in lines and looking all over the store to see what you should get your little one for Christmas. You will already know exactly what you need. Now once we get home and we have all of these wonderful packages that we've just unloaded from the car to our house on the stealth because we don't want the kids to know, it's time to wrap. When you're wrapping your gifts, please be conscious of your posture. Make sure you're not leaning forward too far or side to side. That will put strain on your low back and your upper back. If you're leaning too far forward, you've got to work a lot harder to hold that head up. So you'll be straining your neck too. However, if you're wrapping at a table, your low back will bear the brunt of this, this stress. So make sure that you're doing some stretches. When you're stretching, just stretch your low back by leaning forward or backwards and side to side. Roll your shoulders, loosen things up, de-stress, take a breath, look around at the mess you've made and all those gifts that your family's going to love on Christmas Day. In talking about stretching, you can also implement these stretches before you go shopping. Loosen things up and get limber for that marathon of shopping that you're going to go do. 
You can also do some of these stretches on your breaks. You're sitting down to have your nice snack and water. Lean forward, lean side to side, loosen up that low back. Maybe stretch your legs a little bit with all that walking. Roll your shoulders again, loosen up, take a breath, and get going again. If you have any long-standing kinks or sore spots after the shopping marathon, talk to your chiropractor. Go and see them and see what they say about what your posture has suffered after this huge marathon of shopping for the holidays. Get checked to decrease the stress on your nervous system and decrease any long-standing issues that may be popping up again with the stress of the holidays. It's a happy stress, but it can endure. So make sure that you and your friends take care of yourselves, have a happy, healthy, and safe holiday. What did I tell you? Wasn't that a great story? Just a few little reminders of what you should do. And simple, right? Important, but simple. And that is exactly what we wanted to show you, that healthy choices aren't that hard. And so as you're getting ready for your shopping marathon, check your list twice. But most importantly, pay attention to your posture, hydration, and nutrition. And don't forget to stretch from time to time. All those tips can help you in having a great shopping day, not to mention help you avoid all those aches and pains down the line. And who wants that? Speaking of stretching, however, stretching is an important element to any workout routine, no matter if you're simply walking or you're out running a marathon. Stretching warms up and loosens muscles, greatly lessening chances of injuries, cramps, and even fatigue down the line. Sounds important, right? What's interesting is that most people don't regularly stretch because they don't know how. Do you? That is exactly why we have with us Gloria Golding. She'll show us some simple stretches that anyone can do to get those muscles warmed up whether it is to get you going for your workout or your busy day. So let me get out of the way and give Gloria some floor space. Stretching is an important part of a fitness plan. Today I have Dr. Zachary Wells here with me and what we're going to do is demonstrate some stretches that will help you increase your flexibility. It's going to improve poor posture. It's also going to help you recover from your workouts and prevent injuries. So Dr. Wells, what we're going to do is we're gonna start with the neck down and just show some stretches. Great. So if you'll come right on over here and we're gonna start with a stretch that works the sternocleidmastoid, which is the muscle that connects its collarbone and goes to the ear. And what we're gonna have you do is look straight ahead now you're going to slightly turn, yes, and you're going to drop your ear to your shoulder. And now I want you to look up. Can you feel that stretching the muscle there? Oh yeah, right through here. Yes. With stretches, you're going to hold them 20 to 30 seconds. Today, we'll, we'll just be demonstrating them for you. So go ahead and bring the head back neutral. And he would do the other side, of course. Okay, so the next muscle we have is going to be the neck rotation. And that's very simple. You wanna make sure you keep your shoulders down and you're gonna rotate and just look to one side. And over to the other side. And here again, you're going to hold those 20 to 30 seconds. You do not wanna bounce with your stretches and you always wanna use gentle pressure. Okay, we're gonna continue on with lateral flexion for the neck and that's where you start out here again in neutral and you're just going to take your ear and drop it to your shoulder. Yeah, I feel that right over here. Yes, and bring it back up neutral. And here again, you would do the opposite side. Very good. The next one that we will show you is the neck extends, um, next flexion, where you're gonna drop your chin right on down and hold. That's the way, keep those shoulders back, excellent. And bring that head back on up. This is neck extension. You do not want to do the hyperextension because you're going to compress the cervical vertebrae right there. So if you need to go back only to here, you could even press it up against the wall if you need to be. Okay, so let's go on and show the shoulders. And we're gonna start with the posterior shoulder and you're gonna come out with that arm and you keep it nice and tall and gonna bring it across. And you can just bring that other arm out, try and keep that even straighter, mm -hmm. try and keep it dropped down. 
Excellent. Mm, yeah. Okay, and you would do the other side. Okay, now we're going to do the anterior shoulder, and it's where you come straight to the back. Just stretch it back, keep everything tall, and come right on up. Good. Let's go on to the wrist. You're going to go straight forward with that wrist. You're going to flex that hand up. Do I keep my arm straight on this? Arm straight, yes. Okay. Yes, please. Good. And do both sides, I'm assuming. Both sides, yep. uh-huh. And now right down. Good. Yes. So now that we've got the neck, shoulder, and that, we're going to go to the chest. For the chest, you would need a wall, and I'm going to be Dr. Zach's wall, so I'm just going to hold right here. He's going to walk up and just press, and he's going to rotate to the outside. There we Feel go. Feel it right there. Yes. And drop down. Another stretch that you could do for the chest is going to a doorway. You're going to open up both arms and you're going to walk, just step forward, and you feel the stretch. Good, and then we're going to also now go to the trunk and we're going to do a trunk rotation. You're gonna keep the toes, knees, hips straight aligned, and you're just gonna to rotate to one side as far as you can, always going to pain, not through pain. So if you are in pain, do not push through it. Stop right at the point where it may start. Very good. Hip nice. straight ahead, right? Hip straight ahead. Perfect. And now we're going to do a side lateral stretch, and that's where one arm comes straight up, and you're just going to bring it over and stretch. That's why here again, those hips stay forward. You don't want to cheat and bring that hip up. And what's the whole time again? The whole time is 20 to 30 seconds on all these stretches on each side. Okay, well, let's go ahead and have you go down to the floor. Um, how do you want me to get down? On your hands and knees, please. Perfect. And we're going to start working on the lower back. And basically, we say lower back, but it does affect the whole back. And he's going to do a back slump where he slumps down and holds. And then he's going to come back up to neutral. Neutral being if you had a rod all the way across from his head to his tailbone, it would be holding. OK, there you go. The next one is a back arch. And that's where you're going to arch up and bring it back down into neutral. Good, good. Let's go ahead and go over on your back and do a low back stretch. And this one feels really good. Here again, these stretches can be done first thing in the morning. They like for you to be warmed up, but some of these, if you do generally enough, you could do when you first woke up. Go ahead and pull your knees into you, just like that, and hold on. Feel that stretch? I do. Here again, holding for that 20 to 30 seconds and not bouncing with it. Go ahead and straighten those legs out, and we're going to do the piriformis stretch, and that's the one where you bring the ankle to the knee. You're going to pull this foot up and just put gentle pressure here. So and kind of hold. a counter pressure just yes, like that? Yes, counter pressure. Very good. Good. Do both sides? Yes, both sides. Good. And now what we are looking for next is the hamstring. You're going to pull that leg straight up. Keep this other leg straight. <laughs> yeah, good. Notice that the toes flexed. Hamstring is actually a cause of a lot of low back issues. So keeping them lengthened is very much not just helping the leg component, but also the lower back. And now we're looking at going into a hip outer hip stretch. And if you'll bring your knee in, arms are going to go out to the side. Here again, keeping that knee up and that toe up, rotate over. That's the way. Keeping those shoulders flat. Okay. Yes. Good. Let's go ahead and stand back up. And while we're standing up, we also will want to show you the hamstring stretch that you can do while you're standing up. And that would be putting one foot out and just stretching. There you Just go. like that? Yes, keep, yeah, nice and tall. Keep those shoulders even. And if I squat down just a little bit, I can feel that feel even it? more. Feel it? Okay. And here again, it depends on what level you're at of what you're going to feel. Sure. Okay. If you feel unsteady at all, you can always grab onto something and then do the stretch. Yes. So the next one would be the quadricep stretch. And what you're going to do is stand tall here again. You're going to take that leg. There you go, up tall. 
And here again, if you are unstable, as Dr. Wells said, please go ahead and support yourself. And he can actually push his hip bone forward a little bit, and that will give him more of a stretch. Okay, and that's a 20 to 30 seconds. Let's go on the mat. You're gonna go down into a hip flexor stretch. So one leg down, uh, that's the way. Now just pushing forward on the hip flexor. The ilial psoas, the hip flexor muscle that runs right here, also is something that will create low back pains if it's too tight, correct? Just bringing the hip straight forward yes. like this? Yes, Good. Yeah, I actually see this in, you know, in at least 80% of all my low back patients all have sort of asymmetrical tight hip flexors. And so doing this stretch will really help moderate and minimize low back problems for you. And here again, it would be a 20 to 30 second hold. And you would do the opposite side, of course. So Dr. Wells and I would like just to reinforce to you that doing stretching does increase your flexibility. It does improve poor posture. It also helps you recover faster from your workouts and it will help prevent injuries. So take charge of your own life and stretch. Wasn't that great? I know you couldn't see me, but I was in the back following along. And even though I stretch all the time, there was a few I'm looking forward to incorporating into my daily routine. They seem so simple, right? The thing is, it doesn't have to be hard to be beneficial. So don't forget to stretch every time you work out. It will do your body good. You might even find that a good stretch during the day may make your work day, whether you're a corporate or a household warrior, less stressful, more productive, and enjoyable. And who doesn't want that? So thank you, Gloria, for sharing this routine with us. By the way, did you know that all of our guests on this show share their information not for money or fame, but for one sole reason, your well-being. They all care because they want to see you live better in a better world. But it all starts with sharing information and spreading the word, and that is exactly what our next story is all about. As you watch our show and visit your chiropractor, realize that you are experiencing something that many have yet to experience. How did you become a chiropractic patient? Were you referred by a friend or relative? Even if you came into this office with an injury and a few preconceived notions, I'm sure by now you have realized that there's more to chiropractic than just back pain alone. So we hope that as you are learning and discovering the vital benefits of chiropractic care, you are sharing this knowledge with your family and friends. You just don't know how you may change their lives. This truly would be a gift during this holiday season, especially if it could save someone's life. So learn more of what it means to be a chiropractic lifesaver by joining Dr. Steve Tullius right now. Dr. Steve. Have you ever thought about being a lifesaver? How about a chiropractic lifesaver? Now that concept may sound strange to you, um, but we're gonna talk about what that actually means because I know from experience that chiropractic absolutely saves lives. And in order for you to understand that, we need to go into the essence of chiropractic. What, what is this thing called chiropractic? And chiropractors start off with a, a different premise. We acknowledge that there's this incredible intelligence inside of you right now at all times, always working and always working at 100%, okay? And, and so, so every single function from your heart beating to your, to your lungs, to your liver cells working, to your big toe, are all coordinated and, and orchestrated by your nerve system. So I'm sure you haven't been thinking about um, breathing right now, right? Because if you did, you'd be in trouble. So now that's just one part. The second part is that that intelligence runs over and through your nerve system, okay? That nerve system controls and orchestrates all that. And we don't often think about it, right? We just talked about it. We don't have to think about these things because it's, it's, it's done for us. We've been created perfectly so that that intelligence can run over and through and send messages and tell your body how to function. Now, that alone would allow us to be healthy all the time, right? So here's what we've also discovered is that interference to that system exists. Okay, and causes uh, incoordination and lack of ease in the body, and pretty soon disease and symptoms and all these things start to develop. So now, what can we do about it? Now, chiropractors are the only types of doctors that are trained to detect the most common type of nerve interference, and that's what we call a verbal subluxation. A subluxation is a big word for a misalignment that puts pressure on the nerve system. 
And so it's, it's a bone, a bone in your spine that's out of place, putting pressure on the, mes on the nerves and, and affecting those messages going from your brain to your body, wherever those messages, messages go, whether it be your heart, your lungs, your liver, your, you, know, you name it, all that function is coordinated by that nerve system. Now, that alone still wouldn't help you, right? And so here's the, the final piece, is the adjustment, okay? A chiropractic adjustment is a procedure that we do to help restore the integrity of the spine and release that pressure on that nerve so that those messages can travel clearly to wherever they're designed to be. You know, a pretty simple uh, message a pretty, but yet it can be uh, as scientific as you want it to be, but, but here's the thing, in order to get it out there, it needs to be very simple to those you're gonna share it with, okay? And, and I assume you're gonna share it, right? Because now you have a personal responsibility. And I'm gonna tell you why. Here's why. Mike just came into my office um, last week. He had been, actually um, came in a year ago, but just came in again last week. He's been under care for the past year. And, uh, he came in, in in a severe state. He uh, was at his wit's end. He didn't know what to do. His life was out of control, um, literally and figuratively. He was having severe vertigo. And, um, and a friend um, who was in my office cared enough to share this message that, that we're asking you to share as well and said, hey, have you tried chiropractic? He had already been to the hospital several times. He had been to the neurologist. He had had the CAT scan, the MRI, all these things that, that said there was nothing wrong with him. And, and so the answer was to give him some drugs, which also obviously wasn't the answer. And it didn't do anything for him except make him more sick. And so his friend cared enough to share chiropractic. And, and so Mike came into our, our, our office with his whole family that day. I'll, I won't forget it. And, and um, I offered him three things. I offered him hope. Okay, that, there, that there is a solution, that his body is designed to be healthy. Number two, that, that there is an awareness of, of that incredible system, that nerve system, that intelligence that runs over and through that system. And number three, a specific chiropractic adjustment to restore the integrity of that system. Okay, to take the pressure off, allow those messages to go from the brain to the body and have life and health restored. And so almost immediately, his, his balance was restored. He, he, as he put it, he was human again. He could actually get up and, and go to work and function and, and get his driver's license back and all these things. And, and so he's relating this, this journey to me a year later, and he's in my office and has tears in his eyes. And, and sometimes as a chiropractor, you take for granted just how, how you impact people's lives, how you save lives. And your chiropractor probably does too, because we expect you to get well and everyone who comes to our office. And uh, he told me how, how chiropractic had shifted his life and, and, um, and that he was not only no longer having vertigo ever again, and, but also um, allergies that he had suffered for, from for over 40 years were gone and that his vision had improved and that the regular visits um, once to twice a month to his MD for colds and flus and allergies and, and rashes um, had stopped. He hadn't had to go back to his medical doctor for those routine visits in a whole year. Coincidence? I think not, and, and now you know too. And so, so that's a big deal to that one man, right? And, it's, and that's the big idea of chiropractic, okay? Because for him, the concept of, of that intelligence, that awareness, that, uh, that, that nerve system coordinates his health and life, and that interference to that system can and does exist, in, in what's called a subluxation, a misalignment, was a big deal. And, and the, the, that next part was the action. Someone got him into the office, and then I provided the adjustment to help that, that body be restored. So we're asking you to do the same, okay? And here's what I'm asking you to do. Get up right now, go to the front desk, and grab a whole stack of cards and share this message with your friends, your family. Make sure your family, your kids are getting adjusted, for sure, or at least getting checked. And take that message out into your community. Go to your civic groups, go to your churches, your, wherever uh, you have influence and, and say, hey, my chiropractor would love to come speak to your group. He has this incredible message of health and healing and, and uh, full potential of life that, that I would love for um, you to share or help us share with the community. And that big, that big deal to that one man, if you multiply that by 10, by 1,000, by 10,000, by a million, by, by 200 million, Pretty soon you've affected not only that man's life and saved his life, but affected the lives of the community to the state and the nation and eventually the world. And, and that's the big idea of chiropractic that we're sharing with you today. 
and that you now have a responsibility to share too because you're an ethical and moral person, right? So, so we know that when a person is physically healthy that they're going to start to act differently, right? They're going to be um, more available for um, expanding their mental and emotional health, their physical, you know, their, their spiritual health, their relationship health. That's how this idea really affects the entire community and, and planet. So, so I'd like to end this with a quote from B.J. Palmer. He's our, the fa he's the developer of chiropractic, and he said once, you never know how far reaching something you think, say, or do today will affect millions tomorrow. And that's the big idea of chiropractic. You know, that this message can absolutely affect one person's life or a million, you know, as we continue to share this. So I know you'll do the right thing. Share the message and uh, ask your chiropractor if you have any questions. You can be a lifesaver, a chiropractic lifesaver. It can be as simple as asking someone, have you ever considered chiropractic? And with just those few words, you could actually be throwing someone a lifeline. Remember, you can make a difference. So don't ever be embarrassed to speak up. Chiropractic is such a wonderful gift to give someone. So I want to thank Dr. Steve and all of our guests for taking the time from their busy schedules to show you what it takes to live a little healthier. And just as our guests took the time to share their knowledge and passion with you, don't let it in here. Share the information you've learned on this month's show with people that you come across in your life. By spreading the word, you may help someone else find the benefits of chiropractic for themselves and their loved ones. And with that, change their lives for the better. So on your way out, pick up a few of your doctor's cards and spread them around. Hand them to your family and friends and tell them about the benefits of chiropractic care. Meanwhile, if you have any questions on what you've seen on this month's episode of Life Path, talk to your chiropractor. He or she is a great source of additional information that can help you in making healthy choices in your life. So ask, and us, until next month, enjoy the path of a healthier, natural way of life. And don't forget, during this busy holiday season, moderation and your chiropractic adjustment goes a long way in keeping your power on. So take care of yourself, live well, and have a healthy, joyous holiday season.